To get started, I will be using around two and a half pounds of chicken. Here I have chicken wings cut into the, the drumettes and the flat or the midsection. And I'm also using one boneless, skinless chicken breast. I had just this one lonely chicken breast, so I sliced it into chunks. And I'm also going to be marinating that with the wings. So I'll be doing like boneless wings. <laughs> so anyways, I am going to start my marinade by using a quarter cup of rice wine. You could also substitute rice wine with mirin or you can just skip mirin or rice wine and use buttermilk. It's up to you. I will also be adding a variety of seasonings and spices. Here I've combined a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of ginger powder. I'm also using a half teaspoon of Korean red pepper powder one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder. I just mixed it in the bowl. You can change the ratios of those seasonings and spices. By the way, if you do not have Korean red pepper powder, you could use Korean chili flakes or a little bit of cayenne pepper, maybe a quarter teaspoon, unless you really like it spicy. So I'm going to give this a good mix, combine it well, and I am going to be marinating this for at least two hours you can definitely marinate this overnight for best results. Now I'm going to work on my fry mix. Here I have one cup of all-purpose flour and I'm also using one cup of potato starch. You can use all flour or you could use all potato starch. I do a combination. And I'm also going to be adding one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of ginger powder or ground ginger, one teaspoon of Korean red pepper powder, two teaspoons of granulated garlic powder, and two teaspoons of granulated onion powder. Again, you can adjust those ratios to your preference. I basically just combined them in a bowl and now I'm going to give everything a good mix, all the flours and the seasonings and spices. Definitely with potato starch, you gotta work out the lumps. I notice when using potato starch, it kind of gets clumpy. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what I like to do before preparing my wings, before I dredge them. I like to take a half cup of my fry mix. This is a little under half. I'm probably going to add extra later. And basically I'm going to mix it with cold water and mix it and combine it until it is smooth and the consistency of like a pancake batter. I'm adding around a half cup to a half cup of, of flour or fry mix, so it's equal parts. And I can already tell I need a little bit more fry mix to get the consistency that I want. And basically this is going to coat the marinated wings. Then I'm going to dip the wings into the dry mix. So in the last Korean fried chicken video, I had a couple commenters saying that, you know, once I'm ready to dredge my marinated chicken wings to go ahead and coat them in some of the dry mix, then into the batter, then into the dry mix, you definitely can do that. But I'm gonna be honest, I definitely just pour the batter right over the chicken wings, just like I did here. I give everything a good mix, coat the wings, and then put it right into the fry mix. And I have not had any issue with getting a good coating on my chicken wings this way, but definitely do what works for you. Okay, so my wings are coated with that wet batter that I made. Now my coated wings are going into the dry dredge, or the fry mix. Okay, so using the wet hand, dry hand method, I am going to continue dredging my wings and I'm gonna speed things up a bit.
Okay, so now that my wings are dredged, I have them here on a baking sheet and I am going to let them set for around 10 to 15 minutes. This will allow the dredge to set on the wing and also take the chill off the chicken. While my chicken wings set, I am going to start preheating my fry oil until it reaches around 350 to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm also going to be using a baking sheet with a rack. That is where I will be putting my fried pieces of chicken. Okay, so I'm going to see if my fry oil is ready. Instead of using a thermometer, I'm just going to put this wooden chopstick in and if it starts to bubble around the chopstick, it's good to go. So that was like a non-scientific test, but definitely you want to use a fry oil thermometer. That definitely will give you the accurate reading or temperature. So I am going to be double frying my chicken and I'm starting with the boneless pieces. The boneless pieces will not fry as long as the other pieces. So here my boneless pieces will be frying for around three minutes for the first fry. Then I'm going to continue cooking the other chicken wing pieces and the drumettes and the flats of the wing will be cooking for around five to seven minutes for the first fry. I would also like to mention that the cook time will vary, especially if you do not allow your chicken to set for 10 to 15 minutes on the counter after dredging, because once you pull out chicken from the refrigerator, especially if it's been marinating for an hour or two, it's going to be cold. And cold chicken and fry oil will not cook evenly. So this is one of the reasons why you probably want to let it set out at room temperature for around 10 to 15 minutes. That will get the chill off the chicken and it will ensure a more even cook or fry. So my chicken breast, I'm pulling them out. It, they've been deep frying for around two to three minutes. And once I remove that, I'm just going to place it on the rack over there on the side. That'll allow any residual oil to drip down to the baking sheet and not set on the chicken. Ultimately, with a double fry, this will ensure a crispy exterior, which I, I love cooking it this way. So now that my chicken breast is out of the fry oil, I'm going to start cooking the drumettes. And again, the drumettes will be cooking around five to seven minutes for the first fry. Okay, so that is it for the first fry. Now I am ready for the second fry or the double fry. So I'm going to start with the drumettes. I am going to allow the drumettes and the flats of the wing section to double fry for an extra two to three minutes or until I reach a deep, rich, golden brown color. Now remember, with the boneless pieces, you don't want to overcook those. So for the double fry of the boneless pieces, I will be doing a minute to two minutes of double frying. But basically you're looking for a deep, rich golden brown color and a very crispy exterior.
Okay, so I am done with a double fry and here is my golden brown Korean fried chicken. And I'm going to tap this crust. It is so crunchy and crispy. So I'm going to let my chicken just hang out here for a bit and I'm going to work on my spicy Korean sauce. There are several sauces you can use to glaze your Korean fried chicken, but today I'm going with the ketchup spicy based Korean sauce. So here I have a pan preheating. This is a small saucepan. I've added around a tablespoon of oil. And typically you want to saute the fresh ginger and garlic that I'm using in here, but I did things out of order. So I started by putting my ketchup first. But again, if you're doing this at home, start with the fresh ingredients. So here I'm adding a half cup of ketchup. And yes, things are well heated here. I might need to turn this down before it gets out of control here. You don't want it that, that hot. Now I'm adding a third cup of water and I'm just going to give this a mix. Hopefully it doesn't rage out of control here. I just sort of want a, a nice gentle simmer. So once this is combined, I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients and the ratios of these ingredients, you can play with them to your preference. So now I am going to add two tablespoons of mirin. Next, I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. And again, if you want it less salty or more salty, adjust the soy sauce in this glaze or this sauce. Now I am going to add one tablespoon of gochujang. This is a Korean red pepper paste. Again, this is a spicy sweet flavor. So if you want more spice and heat to this, add more gochujang. Now I'm going to add my fresh minced garlic and crushed fresh ginger. This is one clove of garlic minced and a half teaspoon of crushed ginger going into the sauce. And I'm adding one teaspoon of sugar and I'll be adding honey. And let me tell you why. Typically, and the, the way I like to make it is to use two to three tablespoons of honey, but I was out of honey. <laughs> so I'm substituting this with one teaspoon of sugar and I'm just going to scrape the rest of the honey out of my honey jar, but it didn't quite reach two tablespoons. So that's why I added the sugar. But below this video in the description, I will put what I normally do and that is just honey. But if you don't want to use honey or don't have it, you definitely can substitute it with sugar. Again, just add the sugar to your taste. And I'm also going to be adding one teaspoon of sesame oil. I'm gonna give this a mix. And as you can see, it's just at a gentle simmer. You don't wanna work with a high heat, but I do want the ingredients to simmer and marry well together. And I'm going to let this simmer for about a minute or so. And here is my sad bit of honey. This is, as you can see, it already started to crystallize. It was the bottom of the honey jar. I'm gonna see if I can scrape some more, but again, two to three tablespoons of honey. If you want it less sweet, add less honey or sugar. So basically this is going to simmer for a minute after adding this last bit of honey, and I am ready to pour this over my delicious, crunchy Korean chicken wings. Now, one thing I do notice when making Korean chicken wings when I sauce them is if I brush the sauce individually on each wing, it maintains that crispy exterior. But we are hungry. Everyone's waiting for these chicken wings, so I'm going to pour it right over these wings and toss it. And I will say this, they're still crunchy, but I do find that they seem crunchier when you brush it on. And I know that's tedious work, but if you really are into crunchy textures, you might want to try it that way. So now that this is mixed, I am just going to plate this and these wings go perfect with pickled radish. The, the white Korean radish, the daikon radish, it's, it's just a perfect combination. That and just any side dish that you want, but definitely with the radish. Now I'm just going to garnish this with toasted sesame seeds and I'm going to add a bunch of fresh scallions. You can just add the sesame seeds, you can add just scallions, or just leave it off because the chicken is delicious either way. By the way, this serving serves two people comfortably, or one very hungry person. Either way, it's all good. 
I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.